When I think weeknight meal, I think meatloaf. Okay, actually, growing up, this was always our Sunday noon meal. My mom, obsessed with meatloaf, baked potatoes, and green beans. Like, that was her, like, go-to. So, but it's a perfect weeknight meal because it goes together really quickly, and I am just upping the game a little bit, making it a whole sheet pan dinner. We're gonna put a whole bunch of things on that pan. We're gonna make the meatloaf, a vegetable, everything ready to go. Meatloaf is one of those really homey, cozy dishes. It is different for each person, whether your grandma made a certain one, your mom, but meatloaf is just good, cozy food. And it's like, who doesn't love that? So to start, I always like to take my onion and just to take out, now mom didn't do this. So mom, if you're watching, sorry. Yeah, she'll, she'll come over in like a minute and tell me. But I like to saute this first because I think it takes a little bit of that rawness off. I think the texture's better. I think it just overall is a little bit nicer to palatable to eat in the meat. So I'm gonna let that saute in some olive oil. I'm gonna salt it just to break down the onion a little bit quicker. And then while that is sauteing, we can come right back over here and talk about the meatloaf. So for my meatloaf, for mom's meatloaf, which let's be honest, mom rules, I use both beef and pork. I like a good grass-fed ground beef, has great flavor, like a 92% fat is usually what I go for, but then ground pork, which has a much lighter flavor, and mixing those two, which a lot of times is done in like traditional meatballs, whatever it is, it kind of just creates an overall better flavor for the meatloaf. So I'm gonna kind of just, guys, I'm gonna be honest, we all know this, meat is not pretty. So avert your eyes, the end result tastes good. I like to buy good, sustainable quality meat because it is better for the environment, but it's also better for you. It has better nutrients in it. So I have the two meats there. I'm gonna wash my hands, and I'm gonna keep mixing things up. So to make this more of a one pan meal, which, why do we love one pan meals? Because if you're coming home from work, if you don't have a lot of time, and if you can put everything on one pan, you are cutting time, cutting things to clean. It's just easier and it's just better. So I'm doing sweet potatoes with this. Growing up a lot of times, if we had meatloaf, mom would always do a baked potato, always. But instead, I think a sweet potato, one, I just like sweet potatoes. I think they're delicious. And I'm gonna, what you have to do when you wanna do one pan, you have to think of doing things to cook time. So, you know, our meatloaf here is probably gonna take around 45 minutes to an hour. And so you wanna have these pretty thickly cut. We're gonna kind of make medallions out of them. So I like to find potatoes that are kind of that size that I can do that. And I'm doing them thickly, and then that bottom is really gonna caramelize, it's touching the pan. That top is gonna to get brown too and almost like a crust on it. And that's gonna be about the same cooking time then as our meatloaf. So I'm gonna just set those kind of on the side so when we assemble everything, it'll be ready to go. And I'm gonna cut enough for our meal. So meatloaf makes, it makes a decent amount. And that is great if you have a large family. If you don't, it freezes well once it's cooked. It also holds, you know, at least a week in the fridge. And I, okay, I'm gonna be honest. I will make meatloaf for meatloaf sandwiches. To me, there is nothing like it. You get some good homemade bread or bottom bread, and just if you happen to have homemade. And then you put it together with like thick slices of that meatloaf. I mean, there is just, to me, there's nothing like that. That is so what I just love with some good mayonnaise. You need to do a little bit of a Russian dressing on it, which is just like mayonnaise and ketchup. It's just that to me is gold. I love it. So as my onion sauteing and it's starting to get soft, I want to add my garlic. I'm just going to do my press. I find it easiest. We're going to press this right on top of the onion. I'm just going to sit there and squeeze it. And then you always want to get off that little bit extra because it's going to be there. So I'm going to continue to let that soften and then we'll get the meatloaf cooked together. I pulled the onion off. It's sauteed, it's translucent, it's soft, just beginning to want to brown, so I wanted to pull it off so it didn't get the brown. Sometimes that can get bitter. So I'm letting that cool slightly back to the meat. So I have a couple eggs. This is just, you know, we're just gonna call this Mama Jody's meatloaf. I'm joking, she would hate if I called her mama. She never liked that. But this is her meatloaf, and she knows it by heart because she made it that much. So I'm taking a couple eggs. These just help bind it. They help hold it all together. So anytime you're making a meatball or a loaf like this, a lot of times you need something in that that is gonna kind of absorb all the extra anything in there, the juices, whatever it is. 
So a lot of times it will be breadcrumbs or like a panade, which is fresh breadcrumbs with milk. For mom, for us, it was always quick cooking oats and it does work really well. So the reason I hardly ever use quick cooking oats, what they are is they're just like the old fashioned oats and they're rolled down to a thinner consistency so they cook a lot quicker. And then also, as they are in this mixture, by the end, you don't even know they're in there. And that to me is exactly what you want. They absorb that and they give it that good texture that you have no idea is in there, but it just holds it together so well. Also adding some just like tomato sauce, tomato juice, often I use my home canned juice. You can use whatever you have. I beat the eggs, cause again, good binder, but you also just, they mix in if they're beat, they mix in so much easier. So before I put my hands in there, I'm gonna put a good dose of salt. There's a lot of meat in there. And you really want it to be seasoned well, cause that's what's gonna give it flavor. Some good freshly cracked pepper. You can do ground pepper too, whatever you have. So this is, guys, if you're not meat people, this is the dirty part. I'm gonna put this in and then, this is my onion mixture. I'm gonna mix it up by hand because well, as you can see, I don't know how you're gonna mix that with a spoon or anything. It's just easier. You got hands, they're for using, and they are for mixing things together in the kitchen, okay? It's made with love. So I'm gonna get in here, I'm just gonna mix it all together. I'm gonna be careful to make sure you don't, also the reason I wouldn't wanna use like an electric mixer, say, like a, is because that could actually overmix it. So the meat here, if you would overmix it, could almost get tough because you're pushing it together too much. So instead, I just wanna make sure everything's homogenous, combined. So once I have it mixed together, I'm gonna to put it onto my sheet pan. They're gonna put everything in the oven. I have this all mixed together well. You just wanna make sure it's all incorporated, all the different meats and all the components, because otherwise you're gonna get pockets that isn't. So I'm gonna put it right here in the center of my sheet pan. I know traditionally some people do this in actual loaves, like loaf pans but I like to do it in a sheet pan because then we can have those vegetables around it. And I like to just form it into a loaf. It's nothing perfect, just kind of something that will give it a good shape and then make it nice to slice with because you kind of just want it to have a good slicing quality. I'm gonna quick wash my hands here and then we're just gonna, so we're gonna spread those out, all those potatoes on an even layer. I have water always ready to go in my sink when I'm cooking because it just makes it easier to wash your hands. So yes, the meatloaf is gonna have some juices that kind of leach out of it, obviously. And the thing is, when it does that, those are gonna also though then flavor these potatoes. So I'm spreading them out into a layer. They're nice thick pieces. I'm gonna take some olive oil and just drizzle of it over all the potato pieces. Olive oil is extremely important because it helps actually not just flavor. You're getting some good browning with that. You're getting the top so they have all that good coating on them. And then it really just helps so they get flavor, but also that good crust on them, which is what, that's what I'm craving here. So I do wanna flavor the potatoes just slightly. So for that, I have my dried thyme from the garden. I have a video on that if you didn't watch it. You can always do that. And I just wanna add a little bit of thyme, not a lot. You could also put some thyme in the meatloaf even. That'd be a great way to kind of maybe change up the flavor if you're looking for something different but I just really like it with the sweet potatoes. And then we have to make sure I like to have a little bit of dried garlic. So it's not garlic salt, don't get that confused. It's literally just garlic that's been dried and ground up. So you get a nice garlic flavor without trying to hit all that raw garlic on top where it could burn. This doesn't have near the consistency where it burns. Then I'm gonna also make sure to put some good salt on them. Sweet potatoes have a lot of sweetness. So you really want them to be offset with some good salt. So they are seasoned. It brings out their flavor much better. I think we often at home are scared to season things because salt has such a bad name that we're kind of scared of it. But honestly, I've said this before, I think it's like 70% of the salt we consume is usually from processed foods or eating out. So if you're cooking at home, you are gonna have a much healthier way of cooking. And so you don't have to be as scared of the salt. So I'm going to put a little bit of fresh pepper on those potatoes too. Now I'm just gonna pop this in the oven. Lots well, in the oven, don't worry. If you're thinking, wait, my grandma, my mom, she always put ketchup on top. We'll, we'll get to that. We're gonna put this in the oven. We're gonna let it bake and we're gonna dress it up. When you're making meatloaf, I just feel like you kind of need that glaze. 
for one, if not, when I was a child, if it wasn't on it, what did I do? I like dumped the ketchup on it. So instead I like to make my own, put it on top. Now I always buy a sugar-free ketchup. Why do you need the sugar packed in there? Before a glaze, I do take my ketchup and I add some honey just so it browns better and it gives it a little bit of that sweetness. Yes, you can buy sugar-free ketchup. Yes, you should look into it if you didn't know that. And I add just a little bit, a little bit of mustard. One, I'm obsessed with mustard. Two, I think that tanginess just kind of offsets the ketchup just enough and gives it really good flavor. And I'm all about flavor and I'm about having the best flavor. So our potatoes and our meatloaf are not quite done, but looking mighty pretty if I do say so myself. So we're gonna pull them out. I mean, the meatloaf honestly is looking kind of ugly right now because <laughs> meatloaf just kind of does. But the potatoes, look how pretty. So this is when I'm gonna start glaze, like not start glazing it. I'm gonna put this now on top because that way, as it is sitting there, it will start to brown. It will start to work its way down the edges, be all pretty. And it really does. To me, this just kind of finishes it off. And you can do it with any ketchup. You can do whatever you have on hand. Don't go buy a special one. It's just, that's what meatloaf is. It's that humble, homey dish. And often when you think about dishes like this, they came out of that concept. Use what you had. Ground meat was always more economical. So for families, it's just always a great idea because obviously it's a cheaper cut. It's not even a cut, it's just the ground meat. So I'm gonna look at that, so pretty. So I'm gonna put it back in the oven. I'm gonna let all this finish up. We have a meal on our hands. <laughs> I have a whole meal on my hands. The meatloaf and potatoes have cooked. They are soft. You know, you can just insert a knife into the potatoes and if they're completely soft. And look at that. Look how beautiful it all is. I love how the potatoes get that beautiful sheen on them. The meatloaf. Obviously you need to let it cool down a little bit. I need to, I can't just like make up a plate right away, but <laughs> I am gonna take just a little bit of the meat. Just like a little bit, just cause I need to. Mm. There's nothing like mom's meatloaf. There isn't. And now you can all make mom's meatloaf and have the best meatloaf. It's, what I love about it is, it holds together really well because of all those oats in it, but you don't know that they're there. You get just like the flavorings that you added for that base flavor of the onion, just a little bit of garlic. You get that mixed in there. So it just gives that under, just like that underlying base flavor that amps up all the delicious meat you put into it. And then the potatoes, of course, look at them. They have the herb on them. They have, they're salted well and seasoned well. And what's great is look, it all cooked together. So you could put this with a side salad, maybe a green vegetable if you want to, and you have a complete meal. So this can be ready in about an hour on a weeknight if you want to. It can be a great weekend meal. And then you have leftovers. You have great sandwiches you can make. You know I'm excited about that. I can't stop talking about the sandwich. Yes, of course, I hope you make this. I hope you're excited about it and see how easy these things can be. That's why I hope you share it because I want you to be as excited as I am so other people can see how easy and fun this stuff is. That's the point of food. That's the point of being in the kitchen to make it wholesome, delicious, but also fun because if I can do it, I know you can do it. So I know we can all do it and we can all just be cooking and enjoying it. So as always, check my website, wiseguide.com for this recipe, other great recipes and other tips and tricks. There's so much on there. So thanks for hanging out with me. I'm gonna keep eating. Until next time, go make some meatloaf. Why not? Just look at it.